Each year, one of the world's largest mushroom farms yields a harvest of 400 million mushrooms. These mushrooms are cultivated in compost, which contains a carefully guarded blend that includes a precise amount of chicken manure. Remarkably, these mushrooms double in size every 24 hours. But how does this complex method unfold in processing and canning such a massive quantity of mushrooms annually? Let's dive into the fascinating world behind the mushrooms that bring flavor to our meals. The cultivation of mushrooms dates back to the year 600 AD. However, it was only in the 18th century that large-scale cultivation of this edible fungus began, eventually establishing itself as one of the most consumed vegetables globally. These mushrooms have captivated human palates throughout history. It wasn't until the mid-20th of a century that mushrooms truly made their mark in our dishes. A small city in Pennsylvania engages in an annual cultivation of nearly 200 million kilograms of mushrooms. In this city, known as the world capital of mushrooms, farmers cultivate and harvest almost 400 million mushrooms each year. Kennett Square, with its population of only 6,000, has become the most renowned city for mushrooms. Around this small city, over 60 mushroom farms have flourished in and around this area. Collectively, they contribute to over half of the total mushroom crop in the United States. One of the largest farms in the region manages to harvest an impressive 500,000 kilograms of mushrooms per week. Mushrooms are harvested before their caps open and while they are still firm. Despite their seemingly simple appearance, cultivating mushrooms poses its challenges. The mushroom cultivation process kicks off with the preparation of the substrate, the material in which the mushrooms will grow. Usually, the substrate comprises a blend of compost, straw, manure, and other organic ingredients. Mushroom spores or mycelium are then introduced to the substrate, initiating the growth of the mushrooms. In this factory, a staggering 140,000 tons per year of a highly specialized compost are produced. The growth of mushrooms depends on the quality of the compost, and the preparation of this compost is a precise science. The substrate consists of a blend of hay, straw, and a final ingredient that might not be so appetizing for mushroom lovers, an ultra-secret quantity of chicken manure in each bale. A key factor for good compost is achieving around 2% nitrogen content, and to meet this requirement, farmers include a nitrogen supplement, specifically chicken manure, gypsum, a mineral that enhances the compost's structure and neutralizes acidity is also included. Following the blending of raw materials, water is added into the mix. The next step involves transforming these ingredients into compost in a stinky and steaming bunker. This initiates a chemical and biological activity, converting the organic materials into a uniform mass. Mechanized techniques are used to maintain constant air circulation in the bunkers, ensuring a uniform fermentation process. This biochemical transformation results in the release of energy, causing the bunker temperature to rise to 80 degrees Celsius. The process generates ammonia, and heat-releasing microorganisms grow and reproduce, accelerating the composting process. After two weeks, hot air is introduced into the bunkers, reaching temperatures of 82 degrees. This combination of oxygen, heat, and moisture creates an environment ideal for bacteria, which begin breaking down the steaming mixture. Following this period, the mixture undergoes pasteurization to eliminate harmful bacteria. It is heated to 58 degrees Celsius for 8 hours and then maintained at 45 degrees for 5 days. Subsequently, it undergoes a gradual cooling process over several days until reaching 25 degrees. During this phase, microorganisms convert ammonia into a nitrogenous protein a vital nutrient for mushrooms. The substrate is then infused with mushroom spores, or mycelium, purchased from commercial spore companies. Using a hopper, a uniform spore mixture is distributed throughout the compost, which is placed in 154 thermoregulated cultivation rooms. This marks the final stage of its transformation into a nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus-rich compost ready for growing mushrooms. The substrate is placed in incubation rooms with precisely controlled humidity and temperature conditions. During this phase, the fungi undergoes development and colonizes the substrate, forming a network of white filaments known as mycelium. Globally, industrial-scale operations have adopted shelf technology for mushroom cultivation, with the method originating in the Netherlands. This technique involves growing mushrooms indoors to regulate the environment, and the entire process unfolds on vertical shelves, since mushrooms lack the ability to independently produce chlorophyll, a specially prepared organic environment is crucial for their growth. Additionally, maintaining a constant and favorable climate is essential. 
Room humidity is maintained between 70 and 95 percent, and mushrooms are shielded from direct sunlight in the initial weeks. The air temperature is kept between 22 and 24 degrees Celsius, later dropping to 16 degrees. Advanced climate systems on farms allow for maintaining favorable temperatures for mushrooms throughout the year, regardless of the season. Each room accommodates 96 tons of compost, operating as a spa-like environment for spores. The mycelium functions as the root structure of the mushroom, and the mushroom itself serves as the fruiting body of the mycelium. To initiate the fruiting stage, the compost is covered with a layer of soil and peat moss. However, for mushrooms to fruit consistently, the mycelium needs to be convinced that it is autumn throughout the year. Within a couple of weeks, small mushrooms start to emerge, with the first mushroom heads appearing just one week after planting. Their growth is rapid, doubling in size every 24 hours. As they progress in development, they expand and take on the distinctive shape of mushrooms, complete with caps and stems. This transformation occurs in a condition of subdued light or darkness. To optimize mushroom growth, the temperature is lowered to 16.5 degrees, humidity is reduced to 86%, and outside air is introduced to prevent an increase in CO2 levels. Under these controlled conditions, mushrooms double in size every 24 hours. Once the mushrooms have reached the appropriate size and maturity, they are ready for harvest. An automatic harvester carefully collects the mushrooms at high speed, cutting them from the base of the stem to avoid damaging the mycelium. Harvesters must be careful not to remove the roots. If left intact, new mushrooms will sprout every three to five days for about three weeks. The harvested mushrooms undergo a separation process on a conveyor belt, where they are separated from waste and non-edible parts. Mushrooms that do not meet quality standards or are damaged are identified and discarded. Once sorted, the mushrooms undergo a thorough washing to eliminate any dirt, soil residue, or compost residues attached to their surface. In the packaging line, the mushrooms are weighed and carefully placed in boxes with their heads facing upward. For the production of canned mushrooms, the mushrooms are sliced and then placed in cans that have been pre-sterilized. A covering liquid, consisting of a mixture of water and salt, is added to completely submerge the mushrooms. After filling the cans with mushrooms and covering liquid, they undergo airtight sealing. This sealing process is carried out by machines that affix a metal lid to each can, securely closing it to prevent the entry of air and contaminants. The sealing step is crucial to ensure the effective preservation of the canned product. Following the sealing process, the cans undergo sterilization to eliminate any microorganisms that could lead to deterioration in the mushrooms and covering liquid. Sterilization is a critical step to prolong the shelf life of the canned product. Sterilization is carried out using autoclaves and pressurized chambers where cans are subjected to high temperatures. Once the cans are sterilized, the mushrooms are ready for distribution. If you want to know how caviar is made, watch the video on your screen and please like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating the notifications to continue learning. Thanks for watching.